Welcome to the Friday Casebook. I'm Lina, a freelance journalist and moderator. And most of the time I conduct interviews. So I'm very happy to conduct an interview with Roger Casale, the founder of New Europeans Now, yeah, to find out what happened in the world this week. Hi, Roger. Hi, Lina. Great to see you and great to see our Facebook audience. It's building up every week. Thanks, everybody. This week, uh, we, we might just briefly mention sport. We've got the Australian Tennis Open and we've had the Super Bowl in America and uh, somebody called Tom Brady won the Super Bowl uh, for the seventh time. He was a winner for the seventh time. And so everybody's been talking about goats. Do you know what goats are? Not, sure I mean, yeah, go with the animal, but I guess this is not well, what you we're mean. Gonna, we're gonna show you a, uh, let me show you a picture of some goats. We've got a real goat over there in the mountains, and that's Tom Brady. Uh, so why is he called a goat? Greatest of all time. Goat, G-O-A-T. Oh. Simply the best. You might say Tina Turner is the greatest of all time. I, I would uh, vote for her. And of course, the most famous, famous of all time was the great uh, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali. So we've had um, a lot of talk about goats this week, a lot of sport. And over in Europe, the big match hasn't been a football match. It's been a political one. So it's been the battle of the foreign secretaries, Lavrov versus Borrell. I don't think either of them will uh, ever qualify as being uh, a, a foreign secretary goat. Um, Angela Niebler, who you might know, Lena, because I know you're based in Munich. She's a centre-right politician from the CSU and she's very active in the European Parliament. And she said that we need a high representative. That's our high representative uh, on the right, Josep Borrell, and that's Lavrov, the Russian for the secretary on the left. We need, a, um, we need a high representative who has some weight in international relations. She makes it sound like uh, international relations is a sort of Sumi wrestling match. So Borrell went over to uh, have his Sumi wrestling match with Lavrov, of course, um, following also the arrest of Navalny, but it didn't really turn into a Zumi wrestling match. It was, in fact, a bit more like a couple of giant pandas tickling each other. And Burrell has got a tickling contest, while <laughs> Navalny, of course, is still in prison. Burrell got into uh, hot water when he came back and had to answer for himself in the European Parliament. Why it was that he sat back and smiled and didn't walk away when Lavrov said that um, it was a lie. Angela Merkel was lying when she said that Navalny had been poisoned and Borrell stood there and smiled sweetly and tickled Lavrov's chin figuratively. Uh, and then they went and had some lunch and during lunch the Russians threw out three European diplomats, they expelled them from Russia, and uh, Lavrov wasn't aware of that. He found out about that when he came home. And he also got tripped up in an interview uh, saying that he didn't think sanctions on Cuba are a good idea. I don't think sanctions on Cuba are a good idea, but it shouldn't get mixed up with the idea that we shouldn't have sanctions on Russia for the way they're treating Navalny and their own population. So that was um, not a goat performance there from Borrell. Uh, it was more like a giant tickling match, which Lavrov won easily. So that's a shame. Traveling back from Moscow, what else grabbed your attention this week? Well, the big problem in Europe today is one of the big problems, and we know problems with vaccines and so on, but don't let anybody forget that there's also a big problem with uh, the consequences of the terrible deal that the UK did with, um, with the EU. And it's coming close to Valentine's Day, isn't it? It's on Valentine's Day, you know, the phrase is say it with flowers, isn't it? Yes, this is a man who likes to say it with flowers. Um, he is called Ken Cox from the Glendoy Garden Centre in Persia in Scotland. And he has one of the largest nurseries in Europe. He grows, as you can see, amongst other things, giant rhododendron bushes, which he exports to Europe. But not anymore because the agreement that the UK has signed with the EU, one of the things is that you, can't ex you can export plants, but they can't have any 
British soil attached to them at all. So you either apparently have to clean off all the soil or you have to import coconut shells from uh, Sri Lanka and India and grow your rhododendrons in them. And then you'd be able to export it to the Netherlands and Germany. So Ken Cox is uh, stumped. It's a very sad story. He may have to close his uh, nursery. His message this Valentine's Day, saying it with flowers, is that Brexit is the dog's breakfast from hell. Who's on the naughty step this week? Well, Lena, the person on the naughty step this week has actually been there for quite a long time, um, ever since the elections in Belarus last August, which he lost and pretended that he won. There's a as everybody knows, a fantastic uh, movement led by some uh, women in particular to uh, not only take the smile off his face, but to hold him to account for the uh, tactics that he's using to repress the legitimate democratic majority. Everybody refers to them as the opposition, but in my view, they're the legitimate democratic majority of Belarus with his bully boys in Balaclava, uh, arresting people, putting them in prison. Um, but set against that is uh, this inspiring movement led by three women. That was at the end of last year. What a lovely contrast that photograph is. Uh, unfortunately, they're not together now. Um, the one on the left, Maria Kolonikova, is in prison. Uh, the uh, authorities tried to deport her and she tore up her Past, famously tore up her passport at the Ukraine border, so they couldn't do that, and she is now in prison, and she's just won the Gerhard Baum Human Rights Prize. She used to work in Stuttgart, actually, not too far away from where you are now in, in Munich, and uh, she's one of the three inspiration women who are leading the democratic movement in uh, Belarus. So there's uh, Svetlana Sikanovskaya, uh, and Veronica Zepkolo on the right. And uh, last Sunday was the day of solidarity with Belarus. And we again ask our, our Facebook audience to show a sign of solidarity with the women and the men of Belarus, working to get that smile off the face of Lukashenko on the naughty step, leave him there for a long time and hold him to account and bring democracy and human rights to Belarus. Roger, was there also maybe a very bright spot this week? Well, there's a bright spot in the year at this time, because this is the, this is the start of Carnival Week. Fat Thursday is a day where you eat donuts, for example, and there's another reason uh, to celebrate donuts today, and that is that the donut has given its name to a very uh, amazing, actually, and progressive new economic theory that was thought up by a, a British economist, actually, uh, called Kate Rayworth. What Kate Rayworth understood was that, you know, we need things like a basic income and uh, democratic rights and so on, and uh, a roof over our head and kinds of basic things that make life work. And for that, you need a kind of market and mixed economy. But also you can have too much of a good thing because that then threatens the environment. The problem we have today is that people think that a lot of problems we have in the world are not their problem. So why should they bother? And it's got nothing to do with them. And by the time it starts to have something to do with them, it's too late to do something about it. And this is uh, what we're seeing, for example, with climate change. So the point where people will start to change their behavior is where the problem impacts them directly. What Kay Rayworth is saying that we can't just keep growing, growing, growing. We understand that. But equally, we need to have the necessities of life. So there's a kind of a sweet spot between the economic activity that we need to create the necessities of life and too much activity that is going to damage the climate, damage the sea, damage the, the, the foundation for life itself. And so where we need to be is in the, is in the, in the, in the space of the donut, in that light green space 
in between where you have the social foundation for life, but recognizing that there's an environmental ceiling to, 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 to growth, that there are limits to growth. Now, what does that mean in practice? It means in practice that progressive city governments like Amsterdam, by the way, Amsterdam has just become the share trading capital of Europe, post-Brexit again. Yeah, not, not London not, anymore. <laughs> not London anymore. So they'd probably be eating lots of donuts in Amsterdam to celebrate that. <laughs> but they also have a very progressive city council that is applying the logic of Kate Rowe's idea about the donuts. And this has to work at a grassroots level. It has to work with the local population, it has to work with local projects that um, adopt the ideas of Kate Rayworth and the donut economy. Thank you, Roger. And the audience, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and see you next week. Great to have you subscribing on our YouTube channel, uh, New Europeans uh, TV on YouTube. Uh, find us there, subscribe, tell your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next week.